Greeting artist friends, this is Karen Kuniyuki with the Emanuel School of Fine Arts. And I recently posted a collage art project on our page and got some great feedback from some of my dear friends. They said that video was going too fast. So I'm gonna leave that video up as a condensed version because some people, maybe some of my older students, they don't need um, as much direction. But for my younger students and for my students that appreciate more direction, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new video that really breaks down step by step how to complete this project. So this is the project that we're doing, Cut Paper Collage. It is inspired by artist Claire Youngs. She's from Australia. She's on Instagram. I highly recommend looking up her artwork it's very suitable for younger audiences. So what I've done here is I have taken decorative papers, some that I created myself, some that I just had on hand, and each of these pieces of my pattern correspond with a piece of decorative paper. And so you're using a pattern to cut out the shapes of each body part, and then you reassemble them on a piece of paper and glue them down. So let's break this down step by step. The very first thing you need is to create some decorative paper. And this is an excellent place to pull out some old artwork that's not getting any use, um, things that you've collected. If you're in elementary school or middle school, maybe you make a lot of art, but then you don't display it at home. You don't really know what to do with it. This is a great place to reinvent all that stuff that you brought home. So I had some papers that some of my students had um, experimented with. They were just painting on them and nobody put their names on the back so I couldn't send it home to them. So I just brought these papers home and I started to doodle on them. I just took a Sharpie. Um, I was using Sharpie because I'm drawing on top of acrylic paint and Sharpie does that best. If you're just drawing on top of watercolor paint, you could use regular Crayola markers for this step. But I just kind of came up with some interesting designs using circles and lines and squares and common shapes. Um, if you're stuck for designs, you can go on Pinterest and look up Zentangle, Z-E-N-T-A-N-G-L-E, and you'll get some great ideas from there. And then I did use some colored Sharpies as well. And that gives my paper just added texture and interest. And so once you have these designs drawn out here, this is the paper that you're going to use to create your animal collage. The next step is to come up with a pattern or a template. And I found that the easiest way to do that is to locate an old coloring book um, or even print something off from the internet. And I was just looking for simple animals. Um, for this project, I'm not gonna create the background or the foreground. I'm just looking at the shape of the animal and all of these little interesting details like nostrils on the nose and the inner parts of the ear. Um, this giraffe would be pretty complicated because each one of these spots could potentially be a different kind of collage paper, all collaged onto a larger paper that's the shape of the head. Um, you can even use coloring pages that were started but not finished. So this is a great way to dig into your closet and see what you have on hand to use. If you're an older student and you don't want to use a coloring page, then you can draw your own design, which is what I did with Mr. Sea Turtle here. I just created my own pattern and made it so that I could assemble it later. So once you have your pattern, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna cut out your pattern. And for today's demo, I'm not gonna make another sea turtle. I'm gonna make a chicken. So this was an old coloring page and nobody was gonna use it. Nobody was gonna do anything with it. It didn't mean anything to any of my kids. I checked with them and I cut out the individual pieces that I want to be different styles 
of paper. Okay, there's my chicken. So now I am going to switch over to time-lapse video and I am going to take each one of these pieces and I'm going to decide how, what kind of paper I want that one to be. And once I decide, I will trace around with pencil and then I'm gonna cut out that shape. And once I have that shape cut out, I'm gonna replace it on my layout here so that I can start to see my chicken develop. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and you can follow along. Okay, now that I have all of the different collage pieces for my chicken cut out and I have them positioned on the paper, I am going to glue them down one at a time. And I'm going to start with um, this headpiece and position it the way I want to and then I'll put everything else based on the position of the head. So I'm going to switch again to time lapse so that you can watch me glue everything down. One thing to note, when you're gluing things down, you wanna make sure that you spread glue all along the whole back of the paper. And you can use your finger or an old paintbrush to spread it out really nice. You don't wanna have so much glue that it's dripping out the edges. And then when you glue it down, as long as there isn't glue squeezing out the sides, 
you can put your project underneath something heavy to dry and it'll dry nice and flat, especially if you're using like Elmer's glue, a school glue, something like this. It's important that you weigh it down because otherwise it's going to ripple and it's going to dry kind of crinkly and it's not going to look as nice. So let's glue this down. Okay, we're in the home stretch of this project. I've glued down all of my collage pieces. I even added some little corn kernel bits down here. And when I did mine, I noticed I chose a lot of dark colors. Um, and when I did that, it made it hard to see um, like some of the feather marks. And so what I decided I might do is I have this white uh, paint pen and I'm going to go back into my collage and I'm gonna add just a couple of streaks where these details are from the coloring book to just help bring out those different feather shapes. Now, say you had used some light colored papers to create your animal. You could always go back in with a darker marker or a Sharpie. You could use metallic markers if you had them. You could probably use a whiteout pen if you had that. Um, so look around your house and see what you have to play with after you have created the basic artwork. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add just a little bit of this white paint pen to my design and then I'll be all done. I hope you enjoyed this project and I hope that you'll post your results in the comments because I would love to see what you make. Have a great day. Bye.